Hey guys and welcome. MX Linux 23, KDE Plasma 527.5. Today I'm going to talk about Linux kernels. So you can go from what I have right now is a 6.1 series kernel. You can install a 6.3, 6.4. I'll show you the whole process. Uh, why would you want a 6.3 or 6.4? Maybe newer hardware as one example. Um, so I'm going to show you how to install the advanced hardware support. And then I want to talk about also um, installing an extra repo in your Discover Center that is within the MX ecosystem. And although it's not the wild, wild west of the internet. And anytime you install software from outside those MX sources, um, really you need to think about that because sometimes you never know what you're downloading. And then if you um, improperly install it, you could trash your system. I'll also talk about maybe some, think about some restore options. In either case, folks, welcome. I am filming in today 1920 by 1080 at 100% scaling. And you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary with that gear symbol. A lot of the YouTube players default to 460. It's a lot less screen res than I'm using now. Alt and F4 to close this window. Alt and F4 closes most windows. I do encourage that you subscribe. I have over 200 videos on my YouTube site. So let's talk about Discover and MX Package Installer, starting with the Discover Software Center. We have Discover 527.5. Now, I am going to make mention of this, why you would want to activate a repo in here. So let's say you've got um, LibreOffice installed. Office Writer, I'm just going to pick on. This is 7.4.7.2. It's 7.4 nonetheless. This does not save this um, documents in Microsoft 2010 formats. I'll do a save as for an, an example. So let's say you, uh, you need to save a document in 2010, 365. Office 365. Then you want the 7.6 LibreOffice, the latest one as of last Monday. I'll show you how to install that. So when you um, have the Discover Center without a certain repo installed and you look for LibreOffice, you will not find that version 7.6 unless you do this. You click settings, allow this. Uh, I'm going to do a couple of things first before I point to this. So again, subscribe, double click, double click, click and hold and push straight up, click and hold and pull down to resize the windows. You can certainly do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna go full screen. You see this missing back end? You should have two boxes here, unless you've already installed the other one. And if you did, you probably have something like that, or maybe not. But install the other box that says Flathub or Flatpak software on it. It'll have an install key here. And then if you don't have that check mark after you install that, close and reopen and see if it's there. If it's not, look for a source over here to click that says add Flathub or Flatpak software. Now you, you need to have that check marked before you do the update. Once you've got the update done, do a refresh. Install whatever necessary uh, if you have some other software coming to you. After that, as long as you have this enabled here, you should be able to go to all apps and you should sit, start seeing Flatpak software. There's a couple of them right here. Now you can search for LibreOffice and you can find 7.6. So you'll come up with a lot of hits when you do LibreOffice because there's a lot of derivatives to it and some things are already installed. This one here is coming from Flathub, Flatpak, Flathub, Flatpak software. And it's 7.62-1, released on 925. What is today's date? The 29th. Literally done on Monday. So this is hot off the press. This uh, version will allow you to save that in Microsoft 2010 format. Office 365. And it's got some extra bells and whistles. Yes, there are screenshots that are not perfect, but more importantly, it's got a lot of information you can read. So it's got an install key, right? Pull that down, install key. You also have other software that's also has uh, the equivalence of standard software and also Flatpak, like this one. 
you can see that says Debian and also Flatpak. So what is Flatpak software? Let's go visit the internet. A lot of folks don't know what Flatpak software and how many distributions use it. Well, let me click this. This is flathub.org, by the way. These are all the Linux distros that use this. MX is down here. So there are quite a few. One of the reasons that folks use Flatpak software because it's software that's been repackaged in an uh, area where it runs like a sandboxed environment, isolated from your system. So it doesn't need much from your, your, your system. It's a lot better than going to the Wild Wild West and downloading software. And sure, you can go to LibreOffice directly and download software as long as you know where to put those packages. And then also, do you know how to uninstall them? Yeah, that's why I suggest you stay with the ecosystem of Discover Center and Package Installer. It's a lot simpler for you to deal with. If you like to install software from Terminal, well, it gets that software from those sources also. Same sources, not the internet. Okay, so we go to Favorites and we'll talk about the next tool. MX Package Installer, you can install the kernel here. You can also install Flatpak. I'll show you both. All right, so do we want to go full screen or do you want me to just enlarge this box? I can do, I can do either way, but uh, hopefully you can read that. So I'm going to scroll down to popular and look for kernels. And uh, actually I'll go full screen, why not? So we already know I started the video and I told you what I was using for booted up kernel. I'm currently using 6.1. And uh, I'm going to upgrade to one of these. When I do, I'll still have 6.1 available for me during the reboot. But I'm going to talk about these two here. Minimize that. So I have two of these from the MX repo. The 6.3 and the 6.4. Both of these are 64-bit. Uh, what does AHS stand for? Advanced Hardware Support. So uh, maybe one of the reasons you're installing a new kernel, newer version, maybe newer hardware components. As long as you have a network card that works, you can of course install these. 6.3 or 6.4. So you go through the process, I'm going to make this smaller. You go through the process of the 6.4, you hit the install key. You allow the thing to uh, start going, and it'll say install yes or no, you answer yes, allow it to finish. Once you get the completion box, close that and reboot your system to test it. What you're looking for too is uh, as it's rebooting, you'll get the MX boot screen. Right underneath there, there should be advanced options. You can click on that and you can find your older version kernel there. So you can boot into it in, in case you need to on a second reboot in case 6.4 does something weird. The other thing I'm going to also talk to you about is um, system restore options. There's many, but I want to talk about at least having a game plan. In case something goes um, south, maybe installing this or possibly other software, especially stuff off the internet. And again, I have one more recommendation. Stay within the MX package system. It's my recommendation to keep your system healthy. Okay. But you install the Linux kernels from here, from the popular section. So I'm going to unclick that. 6364, your choice or none. Flatpak software can be found here also. It comes from flathub.org. You can also do a search for Libre in here. Libre Office. It doesn't come up with the nice fancy um, screenshots. But more importantly, a lot of times your box is like this. So you can't see the version number unless you either drag or go full screen. Or resize the box this way. So you can at least see the version number. All right, I'm going to show you something scary. So in addition to this, when you do that, do you want the help files? If you do, it's another 1.8 gigabytes. Add these two together, you can see how hefty this download is. But more importantly, Flatpak software is self-contained, isolated from your system. Remember, it doesn't need much of anything else besides your MX your screen, your keyboard, your mouse, maybe a couple other files. So Flatpak software. All right, so kernel is in here, Flatpaks are over here, MX package installer. 
You can certainly go to LibreOffice and install that yourself. However, my recommendation is to stick is to stick with the MX ecosystem. Discover Center MX package installer. You know, the Flatpak repo I got from here. I didn't get it from the Wild Wild West. It was actually here. So I consider both of them within the ecosystem of MX. Some people may not like Flatpak software, but there's certain uh, things you may want. Like if you're looking for the latest version of LibreOffice, for instance, you need to have that activated. Otherwise, you won't be able to find it. At least not in here. Let's talk about a recovery plan. Do you have any software in mind that you can do a system restore? If not, you may want to try this one. Time shift is a system restore utility. When you open it, normally it'll uh, open up with a wizard. If you want to use this, uh, the wizard looks like that. And it'll ask you questions. What is rsync? Remote sync. I have videos also using rsync with script files and grsync, which uses rsync also. Even for an uh, older version of MX, it should work the same if you want to look, the, look at that info. So my drive is extension 4 formatted, and uh, I'm going to keep that one. And uh, do I want to keep the 5? Do I have a limited hard drive space? Maybe I want to reduce that number. I don't recommend below 2. And don't go crazy by clicking on everything because you will use a lot of disk space when you do. So it normally excludes, it normally excludes, I'm saying this twice, it normally excludes your home folders by default. It's meant to back up your system files. So back up your home folders in a different manner. There are lots of options out there. All right, so I'm gonna just click finish. You can see that I have one backup in here. You can force it. Or you can just close this and it'll continue making backups for a week and you'll have five or six of these. Well, actually, you'll have five of them at the end of the week because this setting here is set for five. If I reduce that number, um, you'll end up with four or three or two or whatever you pick. I don't recommend going below two. You want to have at least one restore point. You would boot into your live media, look for time shift activate it um, in your live media and it'll scan your drive. It may ask you for the wizard, but just hit up. When you see this, just hit finish it, on the live copy. And then it'll scan your drive. You click on restore point, click restore, and that way you don't have to reinstall your system. What's the other option? Well, there are a lot of other restore utilities out there, but this is just one that I'm making mention of. So I have a game plan when you're uh, at least thinking about maybe upgrading your kernel, but remember you can always boot back to your previous. But it's not, it's not a bad idea to back up your system. And especially if you go to the Wild Wild West, it is your system and you can install software from the internet, but I encourage that you stick with the package installer and, and the Discover Center only to try to keep your system healthy because you never know what you download sometimes. All right, thank you for watching.